gentle. He's quiet, but all the time attentive. <laughs> and in the heat of his work, we'll blow upwards at his forehead, so it does lift the locks of his hair. There are some who would hang you for your sentiments alone. Isabella. We must find a way to have everybody's true sentiments out in court in a way that will save you. Do I disgust you? I see women burned and innocent men hanged. Then I am in the grip of that emotion. I'll call David first, then yourself. Who do you think they'll call in Joan's defence? Sodomites do normally concoct a mistress, but I'm ready for that. David? I brought this prosecution. Yes? Surely I may choose to withdraw it if I so wished. Withdraw it? You may, but the parish will certainly prosecute the case in its own behalf. David, you cannot falter now. You must take courage. I remind you that you also signed a statement. If you withdraw, there is a chance you will be prosecuted for consenting to the deed. That is unthinkable. Mr. Sylvester will merely ask you to report what happened. It seems that Mr. Jasker has two legal counsel. I wonder who has really brought this prosecution. Robert Jones was indicted for the deed, not having the fear of God before his eyes, but being moved and seduced by the instigation of the devil. With force, feloniously did make an assault upon one David Jasker, and wickedly and diabolically, and against the order of nature, had a venereal affair with the said David Jasker. And with him did then and there commit and perpetrate that abominable crime, not to be mentioned by Christians, called buggery, to the great displeasure of Almighty God and against His Majesty's peace. What are you? I'm a cobbler. I have a shop next to the Fortune of War public house in Pie Corner. And what do you know against the prisoner? Captain Jones came into my shop. A buckle had come away from his shoes. We went into the workshop. Captain Jones pushed me over and pulled down my breeches. And what next? He... he assaulted me. In what way? In a way that is very difficult to speak of. But you must speak of it if we are to have a verdict. I cannot. Did he penetrate you? He was behind me. He was at my back. That will not suffice, Mr. Jasker. It's a painful thing. To be penetrated against one's will? Oh. To be here at all? The act of sodomy. A crime so heinous that nature shudders. Modesty stands aghast. And against which virtue seeks vengeance. <laughs> I understand and sympathize, Mr. Jasker, with your reticence. Then maybe try this another way. The man who abused you so cruelly and unnaturally, who made use of your body for his own depraved pleasure, is he here today? If that man is with us today, will you point him out in court? You will identify him or not, sir. Is the man in the dock the man you accuse of sodomy? Yes. <laughs> Did he sodomize you? Did, sir. Uh... 
Hardly the most convincing identification of your attacker, Mr. Jasker. Captain Jones pushed me over the workbench and pulled down my britches. That is still actually an assertion that you stand by. Yes. Yes, I do. Did you struggle? Of course. Yet despite your struggling, you could not overcome his force. Why could you not repel him? He's strong. A military man. Are you not strong? You're not a man who works constantly with his hands to hammer and wrench and twist a shoe back into life. In this struggle, where was the vigor that is such a necessary part of your trade? I found it difficult to resist a man so intent. You found the act difficult to own because of shame or because it did not happen? Because of shame. And behold the man you say has shamed you. Behold, Captain Jones. Behold him. You are previously acquainted with this man. I've had his custom for some time. He's a mere customer, then. Why? What else would he be? A customer you did invite into your workshop. What would occasion that? It, it was convenient. Is this not a man who made several payments to you lately because you were in need of capital? It is so, but they were loans, sir. And is this still not a man who favored you with his generosity, who would not see you fail? It is so. Whose kindness and attention you did welcome. I, I welcome the money. Is that so? Look at Captain Jones again. Is this a man you would now put to death because of the evidence you give? I must have my life. I must have my life. Has Miss Maria Reader announced herself here? No, sir. Is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like thorns. You talk of this trial? I talk of Garrow and Lady Sarah. Their love will prick like thorns in Westminster Hall. By which you mean? I have a witness who will shed its blood in court. Lady Sarah's maid. They have not been seen together in any way that could incriminate them. If a man enters a lady's hotel room and the nature of that time is come upon by that lady's maid, would you not think that persuasive? Why are we not more convincing? A man commits a crime not merely against you, but on you, and you falter like you would forgive him. Isabella, it is a hard thing to own. <sighs> Madam, I call you next, and I hope you were better witness. You need have no fear. I will own this prosecution for him. By which you mean? There must be no doubt what did happen, that my eyes did not deceive me. Does Farmer speak the truth? I believe he does. I think you and Sarah were both fools to have been pulled together. Love does make fools of us all, Mr. Sutter. As I came down to the workshop, I heard cries, muffled. Of distress? Undoubtedly, yes. And venturing further? I opened the door and found the prisoner over my husband, his trousers down, forcing himself into him. This is not true. Mm. Jones, she will allow the witness to give her evidence. Continue, madam, if it's not too distressing with the most bestial face of her. And your husband? Helpless. A rag stuffed into his mouth. Liar. 